Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Equip and Elevate. So this month, I'm so excited about this month. This month is all about being intentional and what we want to focus on is really around personal growth and development and you guys know what that means for our podcast. It means we're having more faith orientated conversations. We've spoken about business, we've spoken about careers, but this is key to hold all of those different things. We've actually, I uh, have an, an amazing, amazing guest. We've been talking for the last I don't know how long I was meant to change I end up just standing there with my dress and then you know um, I'm so excited um, because I've really wanted to have this guest for some time and I think this year I made a decision to be bold and actually reach out to her and then she was so gracious to say yes um, so today I have Nibegazi on our podcast she is probably one of yeah one of the most um I'm trying to say one of the one of the best vocalists that I absolutely Amen. loved, um, mm-hmm. and two of her the songs that she sings at Joy Celebrations mm-hmm. were songs that were part of my wedding, my, the worship, um, and and it's so amazing. I'm even getting goosebumps to even have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And I think what's so amazing is that she is so versatile. She's doing so many things, like she's doing a PhD, mm-hmm. and it's just not just limited to one thing. So I'm really excited about this conversation and. I cannot wait for you guys to engage and learn from her. So welcome to our podcast. Thank you, Ayanda. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I think I was just, I'm going to bring this back. Um, I was just saying that one of the songs that you sang, which, yeah. what could you guys see, um, mm-hmm. which, I mean, I'm even getting goosebumps. I was even playing the song yesterday when I was like mm-hmm. reminding my husband. Mm-hmm. I was, it was the year when I um, got married. It literally was a song that carried me throughout that year. I was doing wow. my articles and if anyone knows anything about about law, uh-huh. you know how tough it was, <laughs> <laughs> and and I remember I would say I play that song and I would get emotional because yeah. everything was so taxing. It, you know, you're feeling unworthy. You feel like you don't, you shouldn't be there. And I know it's so removed from what the message is about, but I think for me mm. it was just a reminder of what God what has done for us. Yeah, and and I knew that it had to be part of our worship set for a wedding, yeah. for the wedding. Because for me, my wedding was not really about our love, but it was about, you know, God's kingdom growing. It yes. was about Jesus' love for the church. Mm. It was about really centered around God more than it mm. being about us, us being in love or us being excited about this new chapter. But everything from the sermon, I didn't want it to be a sermon about um, you know, love each other. Yeah. I wanted it to be a sermon about preach. I want someone to leave Thank there and you. to say, I give my life to the Lord at your wedding. That's what wow. I wanted. And that was the mandate we gave the pastor. Like, we mm. don't want love is going to help you, carry you. Mm. Make it about who God is. Speak the gospel. Right. Preach that. Let people encounter God if that's their first time at the wedding. And so that's why the worship set was so important it's because beautiful. it will also speak to back to that. But yeah, I think for me it's a very special and uh, that's, that's beautiful. And I actually share that same sentiment with you. In fact I'm always dispelling the whole couple goals thing and I'm like guys to our lives, you know, the, the purpose and meaning is so much greater than that. And God bringing you together as a couple can never be just so people think you're a cute couple on Instagram. Yeah. Um, for the kingdom of God, God uses everything strategically mm. to align souls back to himself. Yes. So even when people attend a wedding and they think they're going to expect a good time, there must be a God element there that mm. sends them back to God. So mm. I'm, I'm glad that you found the meaning of the song um, mm. and 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 you know, it worked for the purpose of why it was written, which is to bring glory back to God and to say, in everything that happens in sure. life, you know, nothing really matters beyond the point that I am loved. Yeah. So literally, whether I get the answers Oof. that I'm looking for, I don't. The bottom line is that here we are gathered as people who know exactly who we are and how important we are to mm-hmm. God because before we were even formed in our mother's wombs, he had already predestined us for, yeah. for great things and he'd already pre-loved us through yeah. Christ. Um, so yes, no, thank you for that. I love, I, love, I love what you've just shared on because people find me to be so weird around that because people just want to <laughs> admire your family, yeah. how beautiful it is, yeah. how much your husband's uh, um, um, uh, demeanor or whatever matches to 
which is up to you. And I'm like, in the bigger scheme of things, that doesn't matter. Yes, we enjoy love. We enjoy our marriage greatly. Um, but the, pep- the purpose behind it is why it matters before God. Yes. Um, yeah. Sure, I love that. And I think just even to add that, I think one of the things I remember saying that the day should be an image um, for God it should be an image of God's love for the church. Yes. That's what our wedding day should look like. Yes. And I remember someone said, um, you know, she's not, you know, born again or anything. She's like, wow, I've actually, she was my mom's friend. She was like, I actually I encountered such a different feeling. I don't know what wow. it is. In my head, I'm like, that is Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit That's right Holy there. Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> when they said and that. And then mission accomplished, right? Yeah. And, and, and I think that for us, what was what was what was important but i also loved all your other songs on joy celebration so thank you there's always <laughs> that one song That's right one that, song. that also comes at the right time when there's something life changing or life defining and yeah. people just never forget it so yeah. thank you for that uh, testimony sure i'm mm. actually getting so much goosebumps mm. i think it's such a personal conversation i think that's mm. why that's why we're here but to get started i'm going to start with icebreakers so that uh-huh. we can get to know you i generally don't send them because i want okay. them to be like okay. quick questions yeah. i mean quick answers so to get started i'm going to ask you three icebreaker questions and we're going to move into the conversation for today so the first one is around what was the last book you read and what's one thing you could that stood out to you? Gosh, um, it was The Alchemist, funny enough, and she actually came into the room and she was like, <laughs> why are you reading that? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I, I found so far was, what stood out for me was the fact that this man had tried to drive this book to certain levels in terms of becoming a, a bestseller. Mm. Um, but it just wasn't getting the right traction. Mm. And he says, in fact, he got dumped by his first publishing company. Sure. Um, I think the first time it was released was around like 30 years ago. Hectic. And only when, I think he mentions Will Smith picking up the book um, and randomly referencing it without him actually trying mm. um, to get it to those levels because it's like a, a self-help book, uh, yeah. uh, you know, how to navigate life. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I found that, wow, okay, this is interesting. So. He didn't change his story. He didn't change the book. Mm. The book remained what it was back then. There wasn't much that changed, but the hands that finally got to hold it yeah. and to read it, and that's all it took to turn the entire story around. Now suddenly it's in, it's in like the bestseller lists, um, you know, in New York Times, yeah. you know, across you know different listings in the world. Mm. And I'm like, so he didn't change the formula. Mm. He stuck to the purpose and to the message that he had all along and just the right eyes landing on it sure. so 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 he didn't like literally how stubborn must you be yeah yeah <laughs> right yeah. and 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 somebody else can read that as being resolved you know yeah. so determined and having that much faith mm. in what you've packaged mm. Um, mm. because also you find that there he leaned on a lot of uh, in a lot of guidance and this is what will happen sometimes when something comes from god and it's 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 inspired in the non-natural realms mm. people won't necessarily take to it immediately mm. right or they won't understand its angle and where you're coming from and its usefulness right now mm. but if it is from god um and if it's driven by a purpose that's bigger than you mm. That means it's got a time of great exposure. Mm. It's got its time where God will make it sprout. Mm. And I just deduced that inspiration also because I was uh, I was trying to, to read non-academic stuff. Yeah. And I found that that is actually just saying to me because it was, it was actually quite relevant to something that I'm working on. Mm. That, okay, okay, don't mm. change your story. Okay, maybe refine it a little bit here and there. Mm. But, but if you look at, you know, this man was not after traction. Yes. He was after delivering the message as sure. it was. I love that. And because he focused on the right thing at the right time when it didn't even matter to him anymore. Come on, I mean, really. If it takes over 20 years for something to actually finally hit, mm. um, somebody else would have be given up on it. But, mm. but he actually stuck and, and, and stuck to that purpose. And, and I found that to be something that's like, okay, this is actually a lesson mm-hmm. for me. So yes, Tando, I'm... <laughs> I finally picked up that book. It was bought for my birthday. I don't know why I'm slightly distant, um, <laughs> but yeah, loved it. 
I yeah. love that. So the second question yes. is around how do you best unwind? What does it look like when you unwind? After a long day, you are a mom, your wife, you work and yeah. you're studying and... Jeez, man, I don't think I have enough of those moments to unwind. I actually, I honestly do not have too many of those, but I'll, I'll listen to... Um, a worship song or two. I know it's like in my, it's expected. <laughs> it's expected, but literally how I close off my mind because I'm an overthinker. Yeah, yeah. I'm an overthinker. Very similar. It's, it's a oh sin. Oh my goodness. It's a sin, by the way. Is it? It is a I sin. Mean, I don't myself. know if there's a verse about it, but it has to be a sin because why do I feel so punished every time that I overthink stuff? Yeah. So how I, I, you know, just flush out my mind, it will be through through some good music. I also enjoy listening to rain sounds so weird stuff like that so that's no, how I, I get that. myself for rain sleeping sounds. even just for unplugging yeah just that's... just to unplug listening to to rain sounds um or, or sounds of fire <laughs> sounds of fire i've never <laughs> got <a> fireplace <laughs> yeah so like that, that cracking oh, sound yeah, yeah. It, it is quite calming it's weird but yeah. it's calming yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah it actually is coming i think about people it people don't know this but yeah we're weird when we are in our own <laughs> private spaces <laughs> I love that. Um, and then the last one, what is the one thing you know for sure about yourself now? There's not much that I define of myself outside of God. Sure. So I'm sorry. And, and people are like, oh, Uvutanjal, I'm sorry. I don't have a choice. Literally, I'm in the mm. palm and the hand of God all the time. It's that I'm loved by God. I guess mm -hmm. I've always known that. But I get affirmations and, and con I mean, last night my husband and I were in a, a bad accident and we came out unscathed. I know. Oh my goodness. I know. And I was like, eh, hey, boo, whiplash. Because I always hear people talk about whiplash. Yeah. And like, well, nothing. Oh my goodness. Nothing. I'm so and so I, I don't define anything about my life outside of God. So I'm sorry. Or some people, but it is what it is because I know I wouldn't be here yeah. um, attending this interview without that. So it's that I'm loved and it's the greatest. It's the greatest grasp of knowledge that I've ever had. It changes mm. literally how I enter spaces. It changes mm. how I plan my life. It, mm. it changes how I, I move because I don't move in uncertainty. Mm. See, if I want something, I know that the, the love of God has afforded it for me already. Sure. And that's the confidence that I stand on you know, towards anything. If I, I prayed for it, I know I'm going to get it simply because I'm anchored by that love. So yes, that's the one thing. Like, like that's the overarching theme of my life. Sure. That I, I know I'm loved by God. Oh, I love that. That's yeah. so good. And I'm sorry about the accident. And thank you for no, being it's here. it's all good. You know what's sure. funny enough, and this sure. is what I say, everything that the enemy tries against me gives me a new opportunity to have a new lens about God. Sure. And that's what's happened every time. Like, mm. so literally he's a loser because <laughs> every time he tries to show me how much hatred he has towards me, amplifies the presence of God's love mm. towards me. And that's exactly what I see because you've got this truck. And, you know, I wrote about it on, 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 on Instagram this morning. I'm like, I've got this truck coming and our car is spinning because suddenly we hit, sure. I think, a puddle of water and... And, 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 and our car is a high-performance car. So, you know, it's, it's always, but within limits, yeah. but it's always powerful, right? So it starts to spin like this, and it, it was like a movie. I'd, I've never been in an accident in my life. It felt like a movie, and here I'm seeing my husband. I'm like, God, he's too fine to die. <laughs> Like, like you can't imprint it's all this handsomeness face. on this body <laughs> and then demolish it this way. No way, is God. I'm like, no. And, and it was quite petrifying. But at the same time, you know, I was like, he was so calm. I was screaming, Jesus, Jesus, because I know that name works. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, man. So in, in all of that, when we stopped, literally the first thing I said, and that truck went past just the right direction, I said, how loved are we by God? Oh. Like, God is just so good. Sure. Like, damage over the car and stuff. Ugh, that stuff doesn't matter. God just proved right now live. Yeah. In other words, our testimonies are never stale. Yeah. Like, like, literally, today I know that by the time I go to bed, there's going to be a new testimony sure. about what God mm. keeps doing because his love is constant. Mm. He, d he doesn't allow us to go through seasons of, even in, in, in situations that are dark. Mm. I promise you, if you still your mind and open your spiritual eyes, you'll see exactly what God is doing, even in that situation, because yeah, he's always doing something. So anyways, yes, sorry. 
I love that. Sure. No, 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 no. That's, I feel like we've already started the conversation. Right. I mean, I'm just like, it's flowing <laughs> into where we're going with all of this. Um, but I want to go back to when you were like young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you maybe tell us about your upbringing, about mm. who you were and who yeah. you are and how that has influenced the person that you are today? Yeah. So I come from a big family. I usually tell people I'm, I'm number 11 at home. So I'm the last born. But sure. there's nothing. Number 11. Number 11, literally. It's so like my great-grandmother. She has 11 kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she's probably my mom's age. My mom is turning 80 this year. Okay, yeah. They really believed in yeah. in the scripture, talking about be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. And boy, do they multiply. Yeah. Yeah. So I always say uh, my parents were like uh, number six, Ah, no, we can't stop here. And number seven, and not good yet. Number eight, then number eleven, they were like, "Yeah, it is good. It is complete." <laughs> so, and um, yeah, so I come from that family full of love. Mm. Um, I didn't come from the kind of envir- environment where we'd hear "I love you" constantly, but the love was always actioned out. Oh, My yes. dad was born in 1928, so he's quite old, sure. right? Yeah. He, he was actually reaching retirement age when I was born. Wow. So it literally comes from that, but there's nobody. Well, now my husband is a strong contender of this, but nobody loved me like my father. Mm. Oh, so, you know, my, and, and this is why it's so important for men to show up. It's not about your wives, it's not mm. about your cute families. Mm. Show up for your kids. Mm. Presently love your kids because it, it, it informs how they're going to show up in the world. Show off themselves because mm. they are daddy you know, affirmed them. So my father was that. I knew I was love, full of love and full of music, um, full of the love of God and dedication to God. Like, my parents, it wasn't an option. We're going to accept Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) We, Yeah, yeah, we're going to allow you for the first nine years of your life to think you've got that option. But eventually... (laughs) You have to. (laughs) You are going to accept Jesus. And, 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 And being the kind of child that I am, because I'm the last born, you, you are now... Uh, because of the benefit of your siblings having gone through the struggle mm. <laughs> of the of the parents would say because I said so by the time you get there you're like ah, nah you're not going to tell me yeah. this is what I do <laughs> I, I'm going to ask I'm going to question so mm. I was that child questioning my very quiet very shy but if I speak up you know those ones that you're like I, well, aren't you shy aren't you quiet mm. when they speak up you finally just see that okay there's actually a human being here and they're able to process things the way that they want to um, so that was the environment that I grew up in. Because of my sisters and my brothers, I was able to be very free and, and very authentic mm. and, and say, well, I, I get it, but what about this part? Mm. And then by the time I was nine years old, and I was like, okay, I want to accept Jesus. As, as, you know, you sold him enough to me. Yeah. I get it now. No, I, I want a journey yeah. with, this, uh, with this bro, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. in a more concerted effort and, and kind of way, which then became a, a beautiful, the most beautiful journey of my life, honestly mm. speaking. Uh, so lots of love, lots of music, lots of laughter. Like at home, you can't be part of our family if you don't have a thick skin, because <laughs> it's one of those families where we'll find something to laugh about. And if oh, it's your shoes, it's your shoes. If it's the size of your forehead, and yes, I know, it's stadium size, it's going to be your forehead, whatever. Mm. It's all in love. Um, we just had fun growing sure. up. And growing up, what did you want to be? Whoa. Okay. So what did I want to be? So, okay. So then you, you start your very first grade. I didn't do the preschool phases. So I went straight to grade one. So I get my good grades and then people are like, Oh, you're so smart. You can become a doctor, can become a lawyer. You can become an accountant. You can become an economist. You can become this or that. So literally I think after my grade one results, I wanted to be all four of those things. <laughs> and then as I, I grew it. up... Yeah. You've been on a mission, even from been grade on a one. Mission. You're like... <laughs> Literally. So so, so we're laughing with uh, some friends of mine because I had my vision board at age six. I knew, wow. ex- I knew, exactly, I I knew exactly what I wanted to be and what I did not want to be. And at that point in time, and this is where you see, and I'm not going to cry because I'm not a crier, the grace of God at work. Because then I remember being six and being like, okay, I don't want to be a mother. I don't want to be a wife. I was a young, feisty feminist. <laughs> <laughs> I had my reasons. Not yeah. that toxic kind. Yeah. I, I was simply always the kind that just wants fairness, equality, and that's mm. that, right? Mm. And it's never been about 
uh, diminishing the headship of men. It's never been about that. Yeah. It was always about the advancement of women's rights. So it's six. Yeah. And yeah, I am. And I'm passionate about it. I don't want to be a wife. I don't want to be this. So thank God for overriding <laughs> my six-year-old <laughs> visions. Um, but in terms of everything else, God's been so faithful. Uh, literally, I, 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 when I turned 24, I was like, everything I said to God, I want to be by this age and I want to have. I have it. Hmm. Um, and, and it's been by the grace of God. Then he added a husband. <laughs> and it's been such a pleasant surprise. <laughs> and then he added children. And yeah. sometimes I look at them, I'm like, me. Because they'd be like, mama, mama. And I'm like, so I'm the mama. Are you the parent, yeah. Right, I'm the parent, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm like, God is just so gracious. Um, yeah. Because I would not have picked that for myself <laughs> or my character. Yeah. But God knew and he just packaged it so beautifully for me. So yeah, so I wanted to be a lot of things, but I, I definitely knew that whatever I put my mind to, I'd then become. Sure, I yeah. love that. And how, we know with this, you know, you've always been from what I'm gathering at six, you kind of knew where you wanted to land up, which is an insane and amazing. Um, and I think, yeah, that's really like yeah. amazing. I think that you've taken, um, career goal setting on equipment elevator to another level. <laughs> now, let me be honest with you, Ayanda. It's also because I was a very handsome little girl. Oh. I remember having this conversation with my father and he was telling me basically about how shallow men are. And yeah. he was like, I'm Dana. Hey, you know, most women are Ufana no dad <laughs> You look more like your dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, you know, um, so, I, you know, I, but you're very smart, Dana. You're very clever. Mm. So I want you to focus on your books so that you never need to marry you know, yeah. for financial security. I so love, yeah. it's part of the the values and principles that I, I, I grew up focused on. Okay, that I'm said, Vele, okay. I don't need to um, worry about uh, somebody marrying me. So if if this uh, cloud never lifts, <laughs> it's mm. okay. Um, 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 I've got my own visions and, and, and goals yeah. and yeah. I think it's so crazy because my dad was also very instrumental in making sure that I instilled that in my mind. Because he would, mm -hmm. what he used to do every time when we saw young women driving a car, he's like, "You see that girl? She worked hard. Yes. She pushed at school. Yeah. She didn't rely on you know this sense of independence." So yes. I always say that my sense of independence and wanting to push and do well yes. always came from my dad because then the one time. We he even went as far as we were driving and there was this young lady um, who was driving a car and we were actually going to the same store and uh. he even went up to her and said, my daughter, I wanted to ask you questions. Wow. And, and and I think for me, it's that was beautiful. so key. And I think, you know, some of my male friends were like, you know, how did you do it in terms mm. of like not... Um, being distracted about around you know boys and stuff and yeah. it's really around the journey that my husband and I went through because we did this whole thing of we waited to kiss while yeah. for our, when we first yeah. got married and all those different things and I said to them that for me it was non-negotiable not to be successful in life because my dad made sure that I understood wow. that I the one who's responsible for and obviously God is very important in that yeah. equation but I should work hard to make sure that I'm that person for for Absolutely. myself I'm able to provide and I remember when he bought me my first car he's like yeah I wanted to know that no man no man will buy a car right. but me so that when guys <laughs> stop beautiful. when guys stop and want to umshela you know on the yeah. side of the road she should look at them and be like I've got a car. Right. My dad got me a car. You know? So he set the right standards for you. Yes. And that's got nothing to do with you wanting any man to do for you. But if they come, then they know that this girl is a girl of certain values in terms of hard work, in terms of, you know, your dad is a yeah. rock star. <laughs> yeah, he really is. And yeah. I think I'm grateful for that because I always say that like one of my friends, male friends, has daughters and he's always so nervous and they're beautiful girls. Mm. It's like, what am I going to do? And I'm like, I think if you can really instill that in them, mm. for me, that's what has really helped in terms of even like keeping me focused yeah. on what is important. Shaping your journey. And shaping my journey. And I knew if a guy came along and tried to act funny and be like listen if my dad treats me like this why will Bruh. i thank you, you. Know, and that's all that i said like i know what love is yeah i, I know <laughs> I, like and i'm not like trying to define it i know what <laughs> yeah, love is not, so you can't <laughs> sell me something that's not love yeah as though it's love exactly. because I, it's been seen here excuse yeah. you yeah wow Sure. So, and so I can really relate on that and yeah. i think that's why dads are so important i think both parents are important but i think a dad in a 
daughter's life, you can already see the impact in how they sort of view life and view relationships and love yeah. and all of that. And I think for me, that's what my dad has played. So I want to go back to purpose, which yeah. is something that we love talking about on Equip and Elevate. I think a lot of people are like, I don't know my purpose. And for me, you, if you believe, you already know what your purpose is. I mean, there's different elements of purpose. And one of them is to actively seek God and mm. live out his mission, which is go making disciples, which is the standard yes, you know, message in you. terms of what purpose is. Over the course of your journey, how, has your, how have you defined and refined your purpose? Mm. And how has that evolved in terms of your view of purpose? Mm. So thank you for that, because yes, our purpose, I believe, starts with the Great Commission, especially those of us who are followers of Christ, mm. you know, um, go out there and make fishes of men. Literally, we are to turn people back to God and to Christ. He will do it in different ways. Um, but the, the, the common thread for me is that be it in preaching or be it in how I show up within my workspace, how I relate to people that um, are in my operating environment. Mm. Um, because sometimes we, yes, I preach um, on stage. Mm. I'll preach on stage besides, besides singing, as in I'll, I'll unpack and share the word of God, and then people will come to light to Christ mm -hmm. um, as a result of those messages. But for me, the greater um, impact I find, or the more touching one, is where, because of how I conduct my affairs, mm -hmm. be it in the line of business, be it in the line of work or academics, or whatever space I find myself in, I need to be a a blank canvas that draws out mm. the love of God for people sure. so that then they come close to me and they ask me, there's something different or there's yeah. something unique. What is it? What drives you? Then I get to unpack. Then I open the word, right? Mm. I open scripture. And by, by, by the grace of God, um, without us um, conflating issues in the spaces that we operate in, it has just so happened that the light that is in us mm. would draw people to come and have those conversations mm. um, with me. I mean, I remember being in my early 20s at, at one of the financial institutions I used to work um, for, and and these women would flock to me, and I'm, I'm single, I'm unmarried, and they'd be like, <coughs> won't you pray for, for me over this issue because I'm having marital problems? Mm. And then I put on a, a brave face. I'm young. I know nothing about <laughs> marital issues. Um, <laughs> Um, but what I do know about is a a solutioning God, mm -hmm. a God who plugs himself into the lives of men. Because that's all that God is less obsessed about selling Jesus to men mm -hmm. than he is about selling salvation to them for their own sakes. And yeah. that's what people don't understand. Yeah. They be thinking Jesus is so desperate that he wants millions and millions on his end. No, he wants to place himself strategically on your end so that your life becomes easier, it becomes mm. better, mm. and it becomes more of a reflection of the love of the Father. Mm. Because that is a predetermined factor. Mm. And when mm. he watches people struggle through life, it doesn't glorify God. Mm. So when he wants to you know, broker a relationship with men, it's simply so that he brings men back to their original intention for being on earth. Mm -hmm. And so in everything that I do, Ayanda, I, I, I try my best to align myself to the purpose of, if I meet you today, your takeaway should not be, oh, ngabagazi this, ngabagazi that. It must be, I have to know more about that God. Yes. Let, yes. Me, let me bother myself to find out more about that. Why is she so obsessed about that God? Because what I do know is that in your findings, you will find answers for questions you've not even asked him yet. Mm. Because that's the kind of God, like you are not an afterthought to him. He doesn't mm. just, like literally by the time you go to him, he's already seen it coming. Whatever wave of, of pressure, wave of of sorrow that you are undergoing. He's already seen it coming. So the only thing that needs to start now, you open up that rapport and he begins to bring solutions to your life. So in all my living, um, um, a life well lived for me is a life that is a signpost for people back mm. to God. Yeah. Back to God somehow. Sure. Abo, oh, you saw this, you saw that. Great, lovely, I love it. Back to God. Because mm. I know that there, it's not about numbers. We're not trying to make populate the world with Christians. No, 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 this is not a branding thing. Christ Christianity is not a social ground. No. It's literally the ground that changes your life and, and introduces you to the, to the real you. Mm. 
because if you believe in the scripture, you know that the ayanda I'm engaging now is but a shadow of the ayanda that is already in God, mm. right? And in your journey, you are daily unpacking, mm. you know, your package of who Ayanda is. And, and part of what I've enjoyed is the fact that some people will be like, ah, I know you as a singer. Oh, I know you as that. I know you as how you preach to you. Do. And I'm like, he's a multifaceted God. <laughs> so it stands to reason that yeah. those who are um, plugged to him yeah. will discover dimensions to themselves that yeah. they didn't know. If you'd mm. asked little shy old me, literally people who grew up with me who knew that, yes, she was smart, but she was so shy she wouldn't even, you know, um, muster up the ca- courage to say one word in a crowd. They're like, when did you become this person? I'm like, to God, I was always this person. Yes. But it's been a journey of discovering who sure. I am. So that's yeah. why I really, really advise people to get closer to God because that's where you get to know. And then he will decide, you know, like clay in the potter's hands. Mm. You don't decide how he shapes you. He decides to shape you how he shapes you, which is why you shouldn't really journey with people who are so obsessed with who you were yesterday. Mm. If in four years' time... God has called you to something greater, something bigger. And what I love about God is that he's never trying to make you a replica of what's already out there. Mm -hmm. Because people oftentimes will try to be, to pressure themselves to become what's trending, what's popular, Mm -hmm. what's popping. There's Mm -hmm. more to us than popping things. Mm -hmm. We're not here to trend. No. No. My purpose is greater. I, I have more impact in the spiritual realm towards millions that the eye will never see Mm. if I'm aligned to purpose. Sometimes I'll just have a conversation with one person, right, which is you. To the physical eye, it looks as if there's no maximum impact. But in the spiritual realm, because the spiritual realm understands that an ayanda that I've spoken to is linked to so many nations in different ways, Mm. and that's how the gospel gets spread. But people are so obsessed with, I've got to be out there, I've got to be seen. No, are you seen in the realm of the spirit? Because if you are not, and you are seen in the physical, mm. then you're not really living a life of purpose. Mm. But if you are aligned and you are visible where God wants you to be, mm. I promise you then there's no enemy who can ever dim your light. Yeah. And I think also there's something where people make purpose about themselves and how yes. it's more about how I'm showing up as a person and mm. how I'm being received by people. And it's really less about that, but more so about how are you showing up for God to fulfill yes. his mission. Yeah. For the world. And that's how people get derailed. Yes. When, when they shift their eyes from God. Mm. And, and, and that's part of the things that I appreciate about the people that support me in my ministry and mm. my team. And, and you know, somebody wants to join us. And I'm like, if you're going to journey with us, you're going to have to understand that this is a... It's, it's a, it's a we're in a different mission. Mm. We're a, it's, a, it's a different... We, we, we know our vision. Mm. Um, it's not mine. It's God-given. And if it's God-given, it has to be God-driven. Mm. That means then that sometimes I'll, I'll seem weird to the, the mainline approach of doing this because I will not do it because that's what's expected. I'll do it because that's what he expects. Sure. Right. I love that. I love that. I mean, this is such a beautiful... I love talking about purpose because yeah. it's one of those things where... When people say, I don't know my purpose and I'll get a message. And I'm like, oh, go back to God. Start there. That's, you know, I mean, God tells us what to do. It tells us what our purpose is, our, the mission. And your life becomes easier. Yeah. And there's no toiling for you. Oh, yeah. I, I can't even emphasize this enough. Um, half the things that people get to see me operate in, I didn't toil for. I didn't even lift up my hand. It found me Yo. because I was in the place of purpose. Yeah. It found me. Like literally all of it. It's actually funny. Somebody called my husband like about two years back. And it's like, oh, I see you moving with, in, in such and such a space or whatever. Can you link us? Who's your contact? And my husband's like, we don't have contacts. We, we be minding our business. <laughs> you know, he's running his legal practice. We be minding our business. My wife be minding her, her studies and, and, and her work stuff and, and our business um, elements. And then literally we'll receive emails, we'll receive calls and they'll be like, can this platform, you know, have whatever. We want Nabagaz to be part of this or that. And, and this, that's what happens when you're in a journey of purpose that is bigger than you, mm. plugged to God's mm. purpose for humankind because now like literally if you come in the name of an organization that organization is your 
it's your cover and the responsible element in bringing things together for you. So what do you do? You simply show up. Yeah. So when we sell people the whole thing of go back to God so that he gives you a purpose, we are basically saying, de-stress yourself, like literally just remove the burden from yourself so that you are under this protection that just tells you where to go and you go there and literally his his burden is easy mm, yeah. i love that i love that so i want to go into your career now yes um, i we cannot be equipped and elevate without starting uh-huh. going to a career can you tell us your career journey because it's quite yeah colorful it's mm. quite um, you know, you do. By the way, guys, she's doing a PhD. I just learned that now. <laughs> so, and really interesting topic. But I think maybe just take us through your career journey yeah. and um, basically some of the pivotal moments that have defined your journey so mm. far. So, I'm in the finance uh, industry, banking specifically, and people will think, uh, you know, people will be like, hey, hey, which branch? No, um, I've, it's, that's not my space. Um, however, I've been working with uh, you know businesses for for the longest time since I actually started my banking career, which actually spans over fourteen years now. Isn't God just good? Wow. Time flies as well. Yeah, yeah. literally, because straight from varsity, I. I joined this um, financial institution. I won't mention it un- mm. unless they start to sponsor you, which they should. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so literally moved out from Durban to start that 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 career, which at the time involved doing um, business credit evaluations for um, small businesses. Mm. Um, so. Then I, 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 I then branched out and I and I, I grew to to lead teams within that space and mm. to lead to head up regions within that space. Um, I think at some point I was dealing with like uh, five provinces which were termed the inland section of that sure. um, and then the Western Cape at some point and then parts of Houting. Um, and and in all these spaces, you know, I'd literally sometimes be the youngest. Mm-hmm. And I, I was actually saying to somebody, I think this youngest thing is going to follow me ev- everywhere <laughs> because I'm now in my 30s, well into my 30s. And yet still within the space that God has uh, migrated and promoted me into, yeah. I still find that in the room, I'm still the youngest. So it's like a, a common theme that God just keeps 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 driving for me. I then moved out of that space into a more commercial um, uh, size type of business, mm. so business banking and commercial. Then I moved from there to your corporate investment mm. uh, banking space, which is um, CIB for another institution where we would deal with, obviously, you know, big, big, big deals, mm. uh, big corporates, um, think big corporates in the country and mm. even internationally, mm. and I will have dealt with those. And then my current space is a space of passion for me mm. because we operate as not just um, credit risk, um, monitoring um, and managing um, specialists, but also business turnaround mm. because we deal with uh, distressed assets. Mm. So obviously for a certain size of a business and there's always those segmentations, uh, but the bottom line is this, you know, where the business is hitting hard times, we are like the doctors, the finance doctors yeah. that come in and you try and diagnose <laughs> what are the problems yeah. here, uh, what's not making sense in terms of your cash flows and how can we best align our solutions as a lending institution to sort of like drive not mm-hmm. just the right behavior from your end, but to, to, to turn around the traditional trajectory of this business because mm. these are businesses that can literally turn legal mm. at any point in time mm. and funny enough somebody somebody asked me Shelly the other week is she a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> and I say well two things my husband is an advocate so he <laughs> schools me quite a bit but also the work that I do yeah. is so pre-legal that you have to just know a little bit about everything including um, the, the the law and stuff so apparently yeah. I was using throwing around uh, <laughs> legal terms and my husband was laughing at me the other week is like you use words like unduly and I'm like yes I do. <laughs> <laughs> and breaches and stuff I'm like it's because of the terrain that I operate mm. in um, and and the reason I'm passionate about it is because we drive 
important changes, you know, mm. in the lives of people. Yes. If I can, in my decision making, know that there is a a man, a woman behind this business, and it's it's part of the reason why I left the CIB space, so that I can go back to where you can feel like you are, you know, having an impact. I remember one occasion having a. I mean, of course, I can't, I can't breach, you know, certain lines here, but I was just having a, a tough engagement with a business owner because the, the environment out there is quite strained. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you've got, you know, our, our governor standing there with those nice ties and, yeah. and then he'll just tell you yeah. 50 basis points added. And, and the strains, you see it on the ground because then people suddenly can't afford their debt. And I'm sitting with this man, he says... And luckily, not in the space I operate in now, but he says to me, my business used to turn over, I think, over 300 million. Mm. Then he cries. And I'm, I'm a young black woman, and mm. this is a, a black man, almost 60, sure. cries tears, and he says, from 300 million per annum to what it is now, it's come to nothing. So for him, it's his Yo. blood, sweat, and tears, and his sacrifices, because if you're a business owner and you know this, you, you take from your family, you take mm. from your kids because you're hoping that this turns around yes. into, a, you know, a, 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 you know a, the ROI is going to stack up. It's going to become worth it. Yeah. So when you've gone the long haul and tough economic times hit the country and we are in, I don't know, they said we are not in a recession. I was listening to uh, Business uh, Daily the other yeah. day and they said, we just missed a recession. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> because you people feel like we're in a recession. It doesn't matter how what definitions you use to try and escape the definition, but in the real lives of people. And so this man says, all my blood, sweat and tears and, and sacrifices taken for my kids have come to nothing and then they cry. So then that's when I say, even in how I show up in my workspace, yeah. I don't go there with my degrees. I don't go there with cash flows. I don't go there with financial savvy alone. Yeah. But I, I, I intentionally go in with the wisdom of God. Sure. Because sometimes it's not going to be about the money. It's going to no. be a, a, a supernatural nudge mm. that God gives me. Mm. Um, God also makes us smart, mm. right? And, he, and us. he unpacks for us. Listen, girl, like, there was the something. The mother prays, I said, Lord, equip me. He, he equips us. <laughs> like, he equips I us. I do not feel like I know what I'm doing, but you will equip me in he, this moment. And, and I use him a lot. <laughs> I use him. I mean, I remember going through an audit and we're looking for something like, and, and, and millions were at stake here. We're looking for it. And I'm like, God, everybody has searched everyone. I said, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, mm. just just like direct me to where this thing is because I, I, I don't know where to find it. And God said to me, call so-and-so from one of our legal departments. Literally, then I, because obedience, right? You're going to seem stupid. And I can't share that with my colleagues. Yeah. And I said to, to the others who were panicking, I'm like, in an hour, we're going to have a solution. Okay, just <laughs> relax. Then I call so-and-so yeah. as instructed by the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, I'm looking for this and that and a, a document. Blah, blah, blah. So much is at stake here. And it says, oh, that. Somebody emailed it to me last year. So I have it. Oh, and wow. here it is. And I said, this is God. And this is, lit this is the invitation that he brings us oh, into, which is in complicated well, situations sure. where I'm dealing with you as a businesswoman. And because you know your business better than I do. Mm -hmm. Suddenly he drops an idea in me to solve your situation. Now, this is not just about my organization. It's not about me coming in in the cap of my work. That is godly wisdom. God, sort of like, what's the word? Smuggling solutions into people's lives through you. Mm -hmm. You came here in the cap of a finance specialist, a turnaround, a strategist, and, this, and, and God says, that's not where the issue is. The issue is somewhere else. But the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what financials won't show. Mm -hmm. Even if you read those notes yeah, back to back, yeah. there's hidden elements yeah. there. And God will say, it's not really about that. If they move it in this particular direction, then this is where this thing is really supposed to go. And then you get to monitor milestones of growth mm. and change. And luckily, we have more success stories than we have those stories that end up going the legal route. But sure, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a space I'm really, really passionate yeah. about. It's, yeah. it's, I, mean, I mean, we're in a different space, but in a very yes. similar. And I yes. think... It is also such an emotional investment yeah. kind of space because I was sitting with a farmer and yesterday and we finished the call quite late. Mm. I left this so, I actually wanted to cry. I was just oh. like, oh Lord, help us in this, in this. Because you know that it has the ability to either, as we said, like grow that business or not. Just make or break. Or make or break Live that or business. die. Yeah, mm. and I think with agri particularly, I mean, you're dealing with factors that 
You've got no control. Beyond human control. Beyond yeah. human control. And if it decides to be hot and overheat to a point where your crops are stressed, it affects your yields. Yeah. If it affects your yields, it's going to affect how much you're able to sell and then how much actually you're able to pay back yeah. um, what you owe for, to that lending institution. So it's been such an amazing journey because yeah. you get excited when you meet those right milestones because you know what it means for a business. But yeah. in those moments when you're like, yo, God, only you. I mean, I even sometimes say, yo, this is beyond me. This is, beyond. God will deal with this. It's I, beyond I, financial <laughs> models. It's beyond smarts. It's, it's beyond, it's <laughs> beyond. So we need your intervention. Yeah, and, 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 and it's always, it, it gets to that level of just really having to surrender that whole thing. I mean, I think the, the, the financial analyst calls me. I'm like, yo, you know, right now, <laughs> that problem, there's another pharmacy. I'm like, it's beyond me. <laughs> oh, God, we'll deal with it, basically. Um, but yeah, it's... it's and it's, I, I, I normally say, I love it when issues uh, become beyond me because then that means they're at the level of cost solutioning. <laughs> so do something about it because ain't yeah. nobody else in this room can do it. Yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah. Like, no, I can't anymore. It's above my pay grade. So tell me about now Joyce. Yes. Obviously, we have to touch on Joyce. So, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I'm just yeah. like, you know, a lot of us know you through Joyce. Yes. Um, and um, a lot of us grew up listening to you. I mean, not to say that you're that much older than me. I was in varsity when I was listening I to you. When I said grew up, it's like when I was a kid, I used to be on TV singing. <laughs> I wrote a status about that last week and I was like, we used to say stuff like that to Ndogo. So Ndogo was only like a couple of years older than yeah. us. And we'd be like, I grew up listening to you. <laughs> so now somebody sent me a message like, I grew up listening to you. He was like, when I was a, I think he said something like when I was from, since I was a toddler. <laughs> and I look at their profile picture. I'm like, oh, we kind of look like we're the same age range or something. What do you mean? You yeah, was, so it's our turn now. Yeah. We are now the ones people are going to say, when I was growing up. I was listening to you. I was listening to you. I was playing role. Open, I'll see you on TV. <laughs> Every time we're like, me and you are the same age. <laughs> yeah, joyous. You know, it's a funny, funny story. Um, oh, yeah, but you didn't ask your question. So I wanted to see how did you get into that and how okay. and how have you sort of balanced the two in, in terms of, not in just joyous, just your sort of your music yes. career um, because you're a proper pro corporate yeah. person, like legit, yeah. you know, full time you. there. Dedim Kids is such a blessing. I, I often want to call him a pastor and he's like, I'm with his own But But he gets used for godly purposes in different people's lives. Mm -hmm. And um, he'd come to church in Katle Hong, mm -hmm. um, Assemblies of God, and he was in the room and people spotted him in the room. I was the last one to see him because he's not the tallest person in the room. So. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I, I saw when the ranges yeah. of the worship team were like suddenly going up that there's something that has shifted here. It turned out oh, that's him over there. So six hours there uh, for that particular service and people sing their lungs out and I'm backing the entire night. Because yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm here in Joburg for my corporate purposes. So mm. I don't need to be seen by yeah. cartoon kids. After after service, the um, what we were having was a, a farewell service for one of the ladies in church who was going to marry into another church. So the father um, then says, no, 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 but we can't uh, close uh, out. It's after midnight, mind you, and says, mm. we can't close out without having the choir sing. I love the choir of this church. <laughs> the choir sings and the songs that are chosen are not led by me because mm. then if you're in a choir, then you'd know that you've got a specific song. Uh, a song by a certain sister of mine in the Lord is sang. Suddenly, this is why I say, if it's purpose, right? God will find a way. She sings her song, and she's got a higher range than me. You know, mm. she's got a higher soprano range than me. But for some reason, that night after midnight, she's like, after singing one or two lines, she's like, <sighs> then she taps me on the shoulder. And she's like, like finish it off. Yeah. I finish it off literally for two minutes because it's after midnight. You're not yeah. trying to elongate anything here. Yeah. Just two minutes. I sing and. You know, my focus is always God. I see the audience and stuff, but for me, it's always God. Sure. Um, sing, and then service finishes off. Obviously, God's, you know, presence intensifies. He's always with us. But sometimes, you know, you see those signs that it's intensified. Intensifies in that two minutes, and I go grab my bag, and I go. And as I go, the worship team um, leader comes to me, and he's like, Tatum Kize, Tatum Kize says he wants to see you. And I'm like, it's after midnight, stop playing jokes. I'm going mm -hmm. all the way to four ways, please. So I continue to my guy. He's like, no, I'm serious. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, 
when I go outside and under a tall tree, I see this not so tall man <laughs> standing, <laughs> standing over there. And um, he's like, sis, sis, um, what you carry is different. And that's all he said. And mm. that's why I'll say to a person, don't go into it because of a voice. Mm. Obviously, God, will, God is smart, right? He's given you a voice mm. for a reason. But beyond the voice, find the, you know, the, the purpose behind it. Find mm. the reason why and how he wants to use it. So then he's like, what you have is different. Um, please join to our celebration. Mm. I'd like to offer you that opportunity. And then obviously, my first response is, oh, man, I'm so thankful. But I've come here. Yeah. For my corporate purposes, I want to grow in this. And he's like, mm. sis, we will work around you. Sure, right? We will work around you. So literally when it's, it's from God, I'm not saying people should be lazy and not try for yes. stuff. I'm simply saying things will fall into your lap in a way that works for you. Because God knew, because for me, the, the whole thing about my academics and my, and my uh, career are passions that I've shared with my father. Mm. So he knows how much that matters to me. Mm. So it was never about making money or mm. black girl ma magic. It's because it's from our conversations with my dad and it's mm. one of the things that connect us. So I was not going to drop that for fame. Mm. In fact, fame is the one thing I do not enjoy about <laughs> <laughs> what I do. Yeah. Um, 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 and yeah, he, he was like, we'll work around you. So literally, I'd come from uh, Simon Street at the time, and I'd get to rehearsals late, <laughs> be, be, because um, I'm not going to drop my career um, mm. for this. And I, I enjoyed great support. So Joy Celebration is just one of those places that I'll honor always, because they, you know, they sparked in me, because I wasn't quite sure that I loved music. Sure, this is really? Funny. Yes. yes. No I'm saying way. things for the first time here now today. Now, I wasn't sure that I loved no music. No way, the impact. I promise you. The impact. I, I was literally, even growing up, even till today, I'm that kid that my mom would be like, start a song, and I'd be like, <laughs> literally, low so holy side, that people would think, we are, we are born. I know it's simply because I wasn't sure that I loved, I loved loved music. I knew sure. I could sing because my parents would tell me that I can. But I wasn't sure. It wasn't something that I would have picked for myself. Mm. Um, and yeah, yeah. So, so, so he literally even for me to record my album it had to be lots of long conversations with different people and I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't really want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Until God woke me up one night um, mid-COVID and he's like, Listen, girl, I'm not playing these games with you. Mm. I gave you songs because I write songs. I gave you songs for a reason. Um, literally, when I was in Joyous, I quit every year. People don't know this. I would literally go to them and be like, thanks, bro. It's been good. <laughs> I quit every year because that's how, that's, that's the struggle I've had with, I know the things that, like the space where I come alive. Yeah. And then this one, I come alive because of the Great Commission and the, and the, and the mm. ministry. Mm. But the music, I'm like, not so much. And Tatum Kizu be like, oh, God, great. So literally, up until year seven, I was like, hey, bruh, literally, no, I'm good. I'm good, I'm yeah. good, I'm good. But yeah, so I've had that. But, but, but so when I hear testimonies about what God has done in people's lives through the music, through yeah. the songs, then I'm like, okay, God, then thank you. Yeah. Thank you for nudging me that direction because then it pivots back to what matters to me, mm. which is your will, which is your purpose. And then mm. I see why I had to and why I have to continue on this route because truly it's not about, because for me, fame is cheap. Yeah. If, if you really want to pursue this for the sake of fame, then you're chipping your purpose. Sure, I love yeah. that. Yeah. I want to get that written, you're <laughs> chipping your purpose. Yeah. And I think going into this question really, and I mean, you've kind of answered it, but I think I'm just still gonna put it out there. So how have you navigated balancing identity and ambition from both your corporate career, your music career? Yeah. Cause you know, sometimes people are saying you can't be too ambitious cause you're Christian. You know, your identity is then questioned. So how yeah. do you like balance those two? Because you like, you know, yes, and, and, and ambition is different for everyone. Yes. Everyone has different goals, everyone has different things, but then they don't, you don't want to lose sight of your identity in Christ. And I yeah. mean, as I said, you've already kind of answered that question, but I do want to put it out there because the podcast has women that are also men that listen to the podcast, yes. but that are pursuing their professional careers, they're pursuing yeah. their businesses, but they also, you know, 
are believers and they mm. want to, they, they maybe sometimes they're grappling with ambition and identity. Yeah. How have you basically find a balance, if there is a balance between those two? Yeah, yeah. So one of the people that my husband loved quite dearly, we asked him, is there such a thing as balance? And he's like, it doesn't exist. It's a myth. It doesn't, it doesn't really exist. But, but at different times, you will prioritize the things that God you know, impresses upon you to prioritize. But yeah, going to the question in terms of balancing out your ambition, uh, identity, and probably ministry as well. Uh, for me, it's been a constant uh, recalibration, but I've always been, the ambition part has always been there. Mm. What's followed, and it, it links back to what I said earlier, is that the closer I've walked with God, the more he opened me up to other elements that are important to him. And, and one thing about God and I is that he knows the things that matter to me, yeah. right? Uh, but he's made me know the things that matter to him where I'm concerned. Yeah. And so we've got sort of like this dynamic where I give him what he wants and he gives me what I want. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> like, uh, for instance, there's, there's, there's promotions that I got in my career path that I only got because I stopped leaning on the grind. Mm. Instead, I did the opposite. I gave myself more to his grind. Mm. And he miraculously then made things easier and work better on the side of the elements that matter for me. Mm. So the more I have divorced myself of selfish ambition, mm. the more that he deposited back into that ambition. Sure. <laughs> enough, so literally, I love it. To, I had to align myself. I hope we to, have this on camera. And, 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 and this because, you know, this PhD journey that you mentioned has been a passion of mine for, for quite a, a while and just driving to us. And the, literally the, the minute, because I didn't want to do the album, the minute, the minute I did the album, it suddenly became an easier journey. And I'm like, God, but how? Because now I'm busier with everything yeah, else. Yes. But he's somehow moving it along um, in ways that before, you know, like scripture um, um, says where uh, Jesus is finding, you know, um, the fishermen and they say, Lord, we have toiled all night, but at your word, we will let down our nets again. So literally, that's, that's my life story where if I withdraw myself from my purpose as defined by God, the toiling begins, became, becomes harder. I, I struggle. But then the minute I let down my net, mm. I not only catch what is important to him, but I catch a lot of my own stuff in there. Ugh. And that's literally what, that's how that balance comes. I give my life away to him and <laughs> the overflow flows back into my life and so the circle continues and continues. Oh. So if I want to starve progress or if, if I want to starve myself of progress, I must withdraw from purpose. The minute I do that, then there's going to be drought in the things that matter to me. Sure. But when I selflessly give, even my, everything just flourishes and, and a lot of my life is flourishing by the grace of God. And it's simply because I've, I've now come to a point of showing him that God, nothing matters to me more than, like literally, you are my core treasure. Mm. And so if you say, hey, drop this and run this direction, I run. And while, while I've run to it, I come back to you and I found, ah, oh, you planted so much there, how, when? Without mm. me, he's done it without me. Mm. He's made it easier without my efforts, mm. um, which is why it's a journey of leaning. I lean yeah. a lot. I'm a spoiled brat of the Lord. I am. <laughs> I rest a lot yeah. in, in his yeah. capabilities, girl, because I know what it means to toil. I know what it means to, to try with your own strength, and it yields nothing, or mm. it yields the, bur the bare minimum. Mm. But when I take that energy and I redirect it to him, then suddenly I'm sharper and... I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm good on the journey of the things that matter to me. Sure. I love how you've explained it. I yeah. sat there and I'm like, my goodness, I'm so glad I asked the question because mm. I was really wrestling to say, do I ask it? Because I feel like you've indirectly yeah. answered the question, but the way you were able to put that or how God used you in answering that question, mm. it actually, for me, it also, I think it was 
a lesson for myself, yeah. you know, because sometimes we are, I think the questions that we come up with are really inspired by things that we're going through mm. or what people are going through or people are navigating. So as you were speaking, I'm like, my goodness, you're speaking to me right now. I even mm. got a bit, I wanted to like get a bit emotional because <laughs> I was sitting there last night. I was just like, mm. my goodness. And long hours sitting the hell do I have to do this? And I think the minute we spoke, I'm like, this is why we're doing this. This is why people, when people reach mm. out and say, this is the impact, I know we are meant to be doing this, even though it feels like sometimes it's, 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 it's it, it feels like you don't have capacity, but capacity yeah. is unveiled when someone shares their journey, like, mm. this is why I needed to be here today. So, so thank you so much for sharing that. And I think, Yo, sure, there's still so many questions, but I'm just like I'm trying to hand, I'm trying to pick up like which one do I want to uh, ask? Um, but I think this one, I maybe I will um, ask this one because obviously life has challenges. You know, we yes. go through hurdles. Um, what are some of the hurdles you've encountered throughout your personal career journey, and how did you manage to persist and find purpose in that in those face of those challenges? Mm. I mean, my my space of operation, um, you find yourself being not an other per se, but mm. like I said, being in the minority, be mm. it by gender dynamics or by race dynamics. And I'm not talking about racism here, um, or by age, mm. right? So I've, I've always found that, especially when I had to you know, take on people leadership, um, those were you know quite challenging times for me because Yes, you are young and you are given opportunities that are beyond or above you. Mm. Um, and you've never operated at this level before. So it's natural to feel inadequate. Mm. Um, and those Pasta were conversations. Syndrome. Listen, <laughs> and those were conversations that I had to have with myself. And the bottom line was this. You do not have the luxury of failure as a black female. You don't. You know, I was saying to somebody the other you day. You were rooted for every other black yeah, female that would come after yeah. you. I, I was in a certain uh, business sector engagement, mm. and somebody, somebody said said something. The questions were posed, and they, they they gave a certain response. And I said to 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 my to my friend, I said, I do not have the luxury of giving an answer like that. Mm. And answer that the bottom line is I don't know. I'm like as a as a black person. Mm. as this, you know, in the different spaces that you, you don't have that luxury. Mm. You cannot. You, not because the environment is racially charged, mm. but because we are so new and sometimes you're pioneering mm. for others coming after you mm. that you have to give the best f um, first impression mm. for those who must come after you. Like mm. there's somebody who, who um, considers me to be a mentor, um, and, and, and she was like, listen, the, the fights you fought for us. And I was young, <laughs> young, young, feisty, but anointed for it, right? Sure. So it was, it was hard for me uh, because then it, you, must, you must make peace with not being liked by everybody, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. people, people lose so much along the way uh, because they, are, they think the prize is being liked. Yeah. No, no. I'm guilty. People <laughs> tease that. No. Oh, my goodness. Me, Recovering. Me, in some elements, me too. So I have to snap out of it because yeah. I'm like, are you driving the correct objectives? Then yes. Mm. Are you coming from a good place? Mm. Then yes. Are your principles aligned to God? Then yes. Then, it, it, then let's go toe to toe. Mm. Let's, like, let's ring it out because change has to come about. Um, challenge the status quo. And, and that, that's something that I've had to... I've had to make peace with, and mm. some people be like, "Hey, dynamite comes in small packages." And well, it's here, <laughs> <laughs> and that's simply because. Also, another thing, which is funny, I I try to uh, what's the word, you know, where you try to com yeah, I try to compartmentalize my life. Yeah. So like literally, somebody uh, at, at work sent me a, a thing here, and it's like, "Hey, you know, there's a, there's another Ngabakazi, um, saw me that I know. Do you happen to know her?" I'm like, "No, I don't know her." <laughs> I don't know anything about her. And a lot of people ask me about her, but I think I'm a little bit taller than her because I try to compartmentalize um, yeah. my, my spaces so that there's not a, you know, a, a mixing of objectives because I remember somebody approaching me on, over some business deal back in the day 
and they're like, uh, it didn't make sense. Yeah. It just didn't make sense. The, the numbers just didn't make sense. And they're like, you know, as children of God, and like, <laughs> and I'm like, so I would say to them, your world frustrates me in the other world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because your people <laughs> be conflating issues over here. But yeah, so sometimes you are going into uneasy spaces and God expects you to have tough skin mm. because it's not about you. Mm. It's so that a, 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 a Cynthia, a Michal, whoever's coming after you can say, I'm having it easier mm. because you broke those barriers mm. for me. You, you, know, you went through those times of being misunderstood or, or of defining the, the young black female identity within mm. this particular space. And so now it's easier for me. Then I know, job well done. Um, somebody said uh, to, to someone, it was like, I've never had a, a there's, there's no manager I've ever had who's as great as Navakas. Uh. That lady hated me when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I had to set the correct message because I said, sis, I'm not doing it for me. You're not doing it for you. Mm. We've got younger ones who must, when they come after us, have correct references. They must not have excuses for blocking us out. Mm. Simply because when we were here, we were here and we did the right thing and we did it well. Mm. And we did it, in, the, in my case, in the name of the Lord. Mm. Because that's what people don't understand. If you are representing a deity as great as God, Failure is not your option. Yeah. Mediocrity, it's not. We need not, to be excellent. And, I, need to. and I think sometimes as Christians, and I have a friend who works for the church, she, um, full-time for church, she says the one thing she struggles with is grace being used when we're not doing our work. And, and you, I mean, and, 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 and when... Being abused. We abuse grace. She's mm. like, we cannot be mediocre. I cannot have people come showing up on a Sunday. Yeah. And then sound is not working because yes. we're extending grace. Yes. You need to be excellent in that. If you are the sound engineer, when I make sure that this person is leading worship, yes. we need to make sure that that is also operating well. So she is. She will go on about this because in terms of how we need to really also... Because the standard is set, right? Yeah. The standard is God. The standard is what would Jesus do? Yeah. Um, so in all of these things. So it, yeah, it's, 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 it's a little bit of a tough balance because obviously... Um, you you must do all these things without breaking people. Yeah. But we can't let the world think that our God is with our standards. Come yeah. on, He is exactly. Excellent. And that's what she says. She's like, we cannot. God. If you can shop in your workplace, yes, f- your full time and ex- and submit the best report. Why cannot you? Why can you not do that when you shop at that, church? That's why the best employees have to be Christian. Yeah. The best wives have to be Christian. Mm. You guys, be 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 be, be nice to mm. your husbands. Be, I'm. I'm I'm a proponent of kindness. Be kind. Just be kind. I don't like those things where people say, hey, that's how she is. How she wakes up moody. No, please be kind to somebody's son. Be kind to somebody's daughter. Mm. You know, especially if you're, you are, because if you tell me that you're a Christian, you're telling me that from you, there's going to be a fruit of the spirit mm. that I'm going to get to enjoy and eat mm. from. Mm. So come on, let's, in, in every respect. Yeah, sure. In closing, I'm going to ask you two questions that hopefully will really just summarize your journey. Yeah. Um, Just looking back on your journey, what is one thing you'll forgive yourself for? Hmm. That I'd forgive myself for today. Mm. I'm very hard on myself. Oh, we share that. (laughs) We share that. It's not a good thing to share. (laughs) We need therapy. (laughs) I literally always say, like, every time I have guests on my thing, I'll forgive myself for being hard on myself. So hard on ourselves. I mean, I'll, I'll applaud you and throw a party for you for completing a certificate, one year certificate somewhere. I'll be like, that's a great big deal. And here I am with a master's in, in an MBA. And for me, I'm like, you haven't done enough. Go for more. Yeah. Keep going for more. Mm. And when I get the more, like I, I, when I, I did my MBA, I fell two, 2% off the cum laude mark. Mm. And I'm like, what's wrong? Why didn't you? Mm. What, what, why, you know, you just 2%. Mm. So I think now I've, I'm, I'm easier. My husband has made me softer. <laughs> He's <laughs> made me good. softer. Sure. Um, he's such a big person. Same, actually, when I think about right? it. Right? Yeah. yeah. He's so good at, aff- at affirming me. Sure. Um, because then I'll be like, and then I'll be like, no, what's wrong with you, girl? 
Yeah. You're like, you're rocking it. So yeah. I've learned now to do that with myself. I applaud myself a little bit yes. more than I used to. Yeah. Uh, before, literally, man. And, and, and you know what I, I realized about that as well? It can have a sinful element because ingratitude can form in you. Mm. In that, you, when you are going into that phase or whatever, you're so prayerful and you're like, God, help me through this. Mm. When he helps you through it, instead of appreciating yes. and giving the glory, you're so busy. On to your next prayer. Yeah, and unpacking. Unpacking. What, what unpacking could have done what, what could have gone better? What yes. Could have, just like chill and just thank him that you've made it through it. Yeah. Then, yes, you can move on to, but we don't really take enough time sometimes to appreciate what we have now. Mm. What, what have you achieved now? Mm. What, what has God done already? Mm. You know, and I'm now more conscious about that yeah. as I move towards more because yeah. it is exciting to grow and we always want to grow. Um, but yeah, I, I need to forgive myself for being so hard on me. Mm. And all those timelines, yes, like I said earlier, by 24, I'd achieved the things I'd said I want and mm. God had given them to me, my first home purchased and things like that. So I literally had, however, now in my 30s, I'm like, I'll finish this PhD when I finish it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't even ask when I'm yeah. great. I'll finish it. I'm, I'm chilled. I'm yeah. chilled like that. I'm like, when it makes sense to unplug and to pause, I'll pause. Mm. I would have never. Then would have never. Seen. I she would have never. Because yeah. like also then I was like, I need my MBA by age 30 mm. and then done, dusted. And then so and I'm like, no, but there's more to life than that. Yes. There's more to life. It's okay. I'm doing it at my own pace. And more importantly, I'm actually enjoying it. Exactly. You've been I'm enjoying present. it. So before it was objectives based, right? Checklist. Now I'm just, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Mm. I'm, I'm loving it. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's something we can relate to. And I think I've spoken about it so many times. And I think being hard on myself and just having, I think, just having grace for myself is so important because I, the very same thing you said, like, mm. I'll extend so much grace. To others. You to like others. You're a rock star. Yeah, to other people. But for myself, I'm the exception. Like, <laughs> Why am I the exception to this whole equation? Mm. And I think that's something that I also have really struggled with and I'm really working on just being intentional about not being hard on myself. And I think what you said was so key and I love, love, love that. That was actually just, it hit me mm. when you said that we pray for something, but the mm. minute God grants us that, instead of recognizing what God has mm. done, but we already dissecting that and making it mm. about everything and saying, yeah. why could we, instead of recognizing and thanking God and being grateful for what he's done for that journey. And that's so true, That because yeah. it, it almost seems like we're not grateful for exactly. what God has done, yeah, because now we're like looking. Be. So that's, that's gonna convict me every single time, so I'm <laughs> grateful for that. Um, so I'm just gonna close this with the last question, um, in terms of, you know, just really unpacking, the, not even unpacking, but you can even just summarize this as a word to say, what, what do you feel might be the part of the life message that God has given you to share to the world? What is your life message to the world, basically? That's big. Life message, oh my God. Jeez, I, I don't know, there's many, but probably that no matter what deficiencies or inadequacies um, that you may have as an individual, God is truly able to take a small seed and turn it into a big tree. Sure. Right? Yeah. Um, and that's important for me because I, I'm from Danzani. Mm. I have a friend, I, I used to have a friend from <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> yeah. So if you come from our space, it, it, it's got all the makings of your life going either direction. Mm. It can go right or wrong. Mm. Um, it by no means mean, uh, means that it's, it's all dark and gloomy, but it simply means that opportunities are limited mm. for you. And if you, you don't have the right focus, things can go really, really terribly and bad for you. And it's one of those situations where your heart breaks because people that you went to school with, when you drive around and you go home now, their lives are like, you know, it's something else. So I've literally seen in my life where God is constantly inviting me higher, 
bigger than where I am right now. Always. The call mm -hmm. is always to greater and to bigger. And my message to anyone out there is that God is, God is, God is able to unfold you into greater levels and dimensions than what you see in yourself mm. or what your circumstances define. Mm. And that for me is anchored in, in the love of God. I've, like I said, for me, my family life is a great example. A young, ambitious, feisty feminist. That's a recipe for disaster <laughs> for any marriage, yeah. right? But here is God having led and directed me and given me, you know, somebody, somebody had said to somebody, Somebody had said to somebody, I, my daughter is a career woman. She won't last six months in a marriage, right? Yeah. And here I am, and I'm blissfully reflecting. It's been a beautiful 10 years. Yeah. And I say, God, it's been by your grace. I would have never picked me for this. Mm. I, half the things that you keep doing for my life, I enjoy, I've got a good life. Mm. Blessed, mm. incredibly blessed. And like half the things that I'm enjoying, I would have never picked picked me for them mm. but you picked me for them and then you just gave me one simple advice rest on my grace and in resting in your grace mm. you've unfolded a life I would have never I am like you know my brother comes to my house and sees me wearing an apron it's like <laughs> <laughs> he has the biggest chuckle because he knows me I'm like I am not picking up water for no man. Not, and it's simply the, the cushion that God has created for me simply because of the life of dependence and trust that I've allowed myself. Like literally, I've resigned my strength and, and he's just made a, a beautiful world for me. So yes, what you see in yourself, trust God when he mm. keeps calling you higher mm. because in the higher... Uh, you know, glories and thank yous that you are going to give to him every day of your life. Every day I have a reason to say thank you to God. Sure. It's not, and I'm like, I love it when the Bible steps out, the characters step out of the pages and they become what we are living because mm. we are writing out our own Bibles mm. um, to affirm and confirm that God is not a myth. He's mm. not a story. Mm. He's, yeah. So yes, yes. Sure. Oh my goodness. Yo, I'm even like, yeah, it's been such a beautiful conversation. Thank you. And I I've enjoyed it. it. I need it. Like, I don't think what you, I don't think you understand what you've done for my heart and my soul. Mm. Um, yeah, I was in a very tricky situation yesterday. It's um, tricky. Yeah, now I'm getting emotional. Shh. Listen. And you. I never really cry on the podcast. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. I think you've done so much. You, you're, yo, guys. I need a and, moment. Um, yeah. Don't make me because people have never seen me cry. <laughs> um, yeah. Luckily, this won't be on camera. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. I'm and really you. grateful for what you've shared. I think mm. you've blessed me with mm. so much, and I think anyone that's listening to this today um, will also feel leave the way I feel right mm. now. Um, and yeah, God bless you, man. Um, I don't even have any more. Mm. Um, I need a moment. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm mad. Uh, sorry. I understand. Yeah. No, I won't stop. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your heart. Thank you for your journey. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for being the light and carrying God's love and it being evident in this conversation. And I really do pray that anyone that encounters this episode, you'll leave as changed as I was. Um, it was beautiful, it was fun, but I think it just did something to me because of where I, I, I was, it just even curating today. So, yeah, you're such a blessing, man. You are such a blessing. Um, I don't think I've ever even, I've never cried on it in, in any episode. Um, four seasons, <laughs> four seasons later. Um, um, yeah, thank you so much for that. 
Thank you. And I just pray that you'll continue reaching more people. I pray that you'll continue reaching more lives in your personal, professional life, mm. as a mother, as a wife, as a sister. And I'm incredibly blessed and humbled by, by, by you. And Mithali, <laughs> I thank you. <laughs> One day, I'll come to your workplace. Um, and thank you for convincing. No, but thank you because, um, and that's all that I'd be looking for. I'm like, God, I'd be enjoying the bubble of my life and I, I'd be not wanting to come out and do anything except for the things that I want to do. But um, I'm like, direct me because if, if there's a purpose behind it, then my, my soul will leave satisfied and not depleted. Mm. And that's what this morning is doing for me. So as much as you've drawn from, from it, I've drawn greatly from it. And thank you for being a, an affirmation and a confirmation of what God um, is doing in and through my life because mm. I'm always looking so I'm like Lord I don't want to do useless things mm. I, don't, I don't have the time mm. you don't have the time mm. we don't we don't have that luxury because we don't know the length of our lives mm. I don't want to do useless things um, so people want me out there to build my brand I'm like Lord I don't care mm. about that but if if I can leave an imprint um, or a confirmation of what you as God want to convey to somebody then I'll, I'll avail myself because then it's outside of the frame of selfish yes. ambition. So thank you, thank you. You've, you've done a lot for me too. Thank sure. you. Of course, As a token of, token of appreciation, I feel like Michelle also deserves flowers. <laughs> we have these roses. <laughs> I was going to give them to someone else. We're going to give them to her. <laughs> um, the white roses, we'll give them to her. Um, but I think as a token of appreciation and for you to for, for making the time you're a busy person a, a mom you're doing so much and studying I, I know how that can be um, we really do appreciate the time you've taken to um, yeah just come out and, and just share your journey with us thank you so and, so much thank you um, so so much and we really are blessed and grateful and we really hope that it will be something small, but we really appreciate what you've done for us today. Thank you, Ayanda. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. And guys, I hope you are equipped and elevated. And I really, I don't have anything else to say. That's the closing. That's it. <laughs> done. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Remember, the episode does not end here. So make sure you go on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and also Google Podcasts to check out the full episode and be inspired, learn so much more and learn more from our guests today. I hope you stay equipped and elevated. Love from Ayanda.